Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, next up, we're going to have our, <coughs> excuse me, our first working group session for this summit, led by Hiroki Sato, and his session is focused on IP version 6. So I'm going to turn it over to Hiroki. Okay, so just a sec to... Okay, can you hear me and you see my slides? Yes. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Hiroki Sato and let me uh, get started with my presentation first. Uh, I would like to discuss the BB6 and uh, um, as entitled on this slide, the out of box experience of the network configuration. So this is outline. So uh, first half, I will uh, I briefly explain the current uh, FreeBSD uh, IPv6 implementation uh, in terms of the configuration, because uh, we are using uh, IPv6 finally. Uh, it's uh, not rare these days, but and uh, uh, most of people are familiar uh, with the IPv4 configuration, and uh, there are uh, established way to configuration, but uh, for IPv6, uh, there are several deployment scenarios, uh, even for your home uh, network. And uh, it is uh, difficult to understand what is normal because uh, most of the documents about the IPv6 is, um, some are historical and some are uh, old fashioned. And the RFC is uh, changing uh, in terms of the uh, configuration and the best practice. So it is difficult to know the uh, what what should be and what is the best one. So I do not uh, intend to, or well, I'm not going to uh, define what is best, but I will show you the typical uh, configuration scenario and uh, how the FreeBSD supports them. And uh, I want to discuss the how to improve, uh, uh, how to improve the uh, way of a way to configure the FreeBSD uh, when you want to use the IPv6. Because the, uh, most of the configuration will be um, in the rc.conf file, but uh, this file can be uh, very complex if uh, you configure the uh, complex network uh, configuration. And the, it, it, some part is uh, quite difficult to understand. For example, and uh, which interface will be configured in what order? So rcd uh, the, a slash net if is the script to configure the network interface, but uh, it is difficult to know when the script is invoked. In most cases, it is invoked asynchronously by uh, DLD daemon these days uh, in a uh, default configuration, but uh, it is unclear uh, to system administrator uh, about uh, how the network uh, configuration will be, um, uh, a network will be configured uh, on a boot time or when you type the script manually. And uh, I want to, uh, I want your input, the feedback about your bad experience, especially. Uh, and not specific to the network, uh, uh, please share your experience about the configuration or frustration about the configuration. And uh, it can be as a Q&A and the questions uh, or uh, on the chat, or uh, I prepared the website, the HackMD URL on the bottom, uh, bottom uh, I put the URL on the bottom of the this slide. So please access this and then everyone can edit this page. So please uh, share your experience. And uh, this slide is available uh, as a PDF file on the uh, URL on the top of the uh, this slide. So please download if you want to uh, read the PDF uh, on, the, on your local machine. So the first half, I, I will, uh, uh, look into the uh, look through the IPv6 uh, configuration. The core protocol is mature, and uh, you can use it uh, safely. And uh, uh, many services are now available 
also over IPv6. But the deployment is challenging because the uh, best practice is changing. And especially in terms of the automatic configuration mechanism, uh, there are two uh, primary uh, configuration mechanisms in the IPv6. Uh, one is called the Slack uh, stateless address alt configuration, and the another is a DHCPv6. It is similar to the DHCP in the IPv4, but uh, um, quite different from the uh, IPv uh, DHCPv4 uh, actually. And uh, uh, these days, uh, we have to consider uh, privacy and security uh, issues. And the IPv6 has uh, several uh, enhancement after the uh, first uh, design over uh, 20 years ago. But the uh, FreeBSD supports the part of them, and the uh, FreeBSD does not. Uh, 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 the uh, important enhancement is still missing on the FreeBSD. And the uh, more complex environment, uh, such as the uh, multi prefix, the uh, multiple prefix, or multi horn, so multi interface, uh, these kind of environments are not uh, well described in the RFCs. So uh, this behavior is uh, heavily depending on the uh, implementation. So the IPv6 address uh, you can see on the slide is uh, 128 bit long, and uh, compared to the uh, IPv4, the four times long and uh, uh, digital representation. And you can use IPv6 like IPv4, uh, just uh, uh, replacing the IPv4 address with uh, this kind of a long uh, IPv6 address. And uh, it works, but the configuration is not so simple. So I will show the four um, possible uh, common or popular uh, configuration scenarios. Uh, I categorized into the four cases uh, listed on this slide. And I will assume the network as a uh, left hand side uh, diagram. The, you have the IPv6 host and you have uh, one IPv6 router on your network and another host is connected to another your a local area network, and the internet service provider has IPv6 router as a default router of your network. And uh, you can choose the, uh, of course, there are a lot of ways to uh, configure your host router, um, but uh, rough, I think uh, they can be roughly categorized into these four. The one is the manual configuration, fully manual configuration, and the BCD is uh, somewhat automatically uh, configure, uh, automatic configuration uh, in the IPv6 protocol. And uh, SLADC stands for the stateless as a result configuration as shown on this slide. Okay, let's go on to the uh, uh, first one. So you can configure the manual uh, uh, in, by hand by specifying the, all of the addresses uh, in the rc.com, for example, just like the bv 4 manual configuration. On FreeBSD, the, the current implementation, the nav, the variable in the rc.com for IPv6 is uh, the most important one. It's the ifconfig underscore interface name underscore IPv6. This is the per interface nav which indicates that you want to use the IPv6 on this interface. Without this, the most of the configuration uh, related to the IPv6 on this interface will be ignored, even if you specify. So uh, if you put this line, the rc.d uh, scripts will configure the IPv6 uh, related uh, knobs uh, such as the uh, syscontrol the or um, other necessary uh, configuration may be performed during um, the boot script. And uh, you can put the address uh, by using an uh, INS6 prefix uh, inside the IA config variable, like uh, as shown on this slide, and uh, just uh, a long 128-bit address you can specify. And another uh, other uh, knobs uh, which specifies address uh, can be used if used also 
be used for IPv6 by using the INET6 prefix. Actually, the most of the um, address-related um, rc.com variable now accept the uh, address family prefix, even for IPv4. So uh, this is a recommended way to specify the address. So even if you uh, specify the I IPv4 address, uh, please put the INET because the uh, variable supports the uh, INET and the INET6, or uh, some knobs supports the ether or uh, link or other uh, more exotic uh, keywords uh, about the address. So by default, the IF config assumes the IP, IPv4 address, but uh, as I recommend to put explicitly, and uh, you can use the IPv6 default router and IPv6 gateway to uh, configure it if if you want to configure an IPv6 router in addition to that. And uh, this is the IP level uh, configuration, and uh, you probably need to configure the DNS server in the resolve.conf, and you can put the IP, uh, IPv6 address uh, directly into the name server line and the uh, resolve.conf. And the next one is the uh, Slack. Uh, this is uh, uh, most widely used uh, automatic configuration, and the IPv6 supports to use the, this uh, configuration as the default mechanism. And this is basically um, uh, the configuration mechanism uh, which depends on the IPv6 router. IPv6 router is always advertising the link information. Link information means the MTU, the maximum transfer unit, and the address prefix. Address prefix means the uh, subnet to a network address and the IPv4 counterpart. So RA message and on the left hand side diagram is uh, advertising on the uh, subnet connected to the uh, IPv6 router on the ISP side. So uh, you can uh, you can receive the, this message to configure the uh, address and the default router. To use the array message to configure the IPv6 host, you can put the uh, accept the out of nav to the IF config line. This uh, this flag can be specified at uh, any of the IF config EM line, but uh, uh, you always have to configure. Uh, you have to um, specify the or define the IF config EM zero IPv6 and that's underscore IPv6 uh, line to use the IPv6. So uh, this is the most um, uh, natural way to uh, configure the accept RT, uh, RT out of flag. Uh, to put this flag, the IPv6 host, uh, the interface EM will receive the uh, RA message and to and uh, automatically configure the uh, address and the default router by kernel without interaction with the user line process. And uh, it is, this flag is a bit dangerous because uh, if the uh, uh, model form with the array message or malicious array message is uh, floating around your network, the IPv6 host um, will accept any kind of configuration uh, without checking. So uh, this flag is not enabled by default. And the DNS server information uh, it can be also automatically configured by the array message. So a uh, router can distribute the uh, DNS server's address uh, on the uh, by your array message, uh, which if the router is configured to do so. So this uh, option is um, much later uh, appeared much later. Uh, RFC, so uh, some implementation does not support the DNS server, but uh, uh, clients uh, these days uh, support the uh, DNS server. But this option 
cannot be processed by the kernel. So on FreeBSD, uh, user run daemon will uh, process the DNS server option and the update uh, resolve.com. So in this case, the address will be configured uh, as shown on the bottom of this slide. Uh, the prefix part, the subnet network address part, will be configured by the array message and the, and the lower 64 bit. This will be generated by using the MAC address. So uh, this configuration um, configured the uh, network address only. Uh, but by using the uh, route advertisement message. So uh, uh, if you enable a Slack, then you will have the complete address on the host and uh, you can go out from your network and reach the internet. And the C is a more, more complex one, the Slack and the DCP v6. And you are wondering, that oh sound is blocked. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you just fine. Oh oh, one one is uh saying that he my sound is dropped. But I okay let's let's go on. And uh, so uh, case C is the using a DHCP v six. DHCP v six is not. Uh, similar to DHCP v4, but it is not widely used because the Slack is enough to configure the uh, router facing interface on the IPv6 host. As I explained, array message is distributed in a periodic manner from the router, so host can receive the array message to configure the uh, network. Uh, information on the host, including a DNS server. So oh, the SCPv6, in this case, uh, how to, uh, so how the, the SCPv6 act as the automatic configuration in this case. The SCPv6 is yes, um, a way to distribute the options. I mean, the network information for uh, to configure the host or router. This is the same as the DCP4, and it includes the address. But the in the IPv6 case, the DCPv6 is designed to uh, invoke by after the after receiving the array message. I mean the so this array message has all of the information about your link. And it includes the information about uh, whether DHCP v6 should be used or not. So RM message has a, a, a option which indicates that this network uses the DHCP v6. So uh, uh, ideal behavior, uh, intended behavior of the IPv6 host is first receive the array message and check the bit about the DHCP v6. If it is enabled, the DHCP v6 client should be invoked. It's on FreeBSD, this behavior is also uh, handled by the RC so, uh, or DSOLD. Uh, this is used, also used for DNS uh, information to get the identity information in the array message. But uh, in this case, the uh, DCP v6 uh, bit will uh, activate the um, shell script. The, this slide shows the RTSOLD flag variable in the middle of the slide, and the DCP.sh is a uh, script which will be invoked if the array message has the information about the DCP v6. You have to install the DCP v6 client and uh, uh, you have to write uh, this script, but uh, this IPv6 client is not a daemon which should be in invoked or run by the RCD script at boot time. So um, this is the design the behavior and uh, uh, how the FreeBSD uh, supports the uh, this uh, 
uh, DSCP basics evocation. And uh, DSCP basics has a uh, uh, capability to configure the IPv6 router. This is called the DCV V6 PD, the prefix delegation. So on the left hand side diagram shows the uh, how the address will be configured. One arrow is from the DCV V6 server is host and one, another arrow will uh, go to the IPv6 router. Uh, the IPv6, on the IPv6 router, the uh, internal network prefix internal network address can be configured by using a DHCP. This is a popular way to use a DHCP to configure the, your IPv6 router. It is not so common to use the DHCP for um, host uh, configuration of the host. So another complex one is the PPVoE. The PPVoE is uh, widely used for the IPv4 uh, network uh, so uh, internet service provider provides the IPv4 reachability over the internet connection. Uh, in this case, the Slack cannot be used. So instead, the P uh, IPv6 CP, uh, it is um, um, a part of the PPPoE protocol and which can distribute the address information. And uh, after receiving the address information, the um, your IPv6 node will work as the Ethernet PPPoE tunnel endpoint. So it must act as a router and uh, uh, you can run the uh, DHCP v6 to get the another information. So the details are complex, but uh, uh, these four are, um, I believe these four are popular. Uh, way to configure the IPv6 and uh, uh, my investigation over years uh, to about the use case of the IPv6 and the current RCD and uh, so case D is not uh, supported by the RCD uh, directly but uh, um, most of this configuration can be supported by the current RCD script and the I uh, part of them I, I designed them to work with uh, these one. So questions is that uh, if you have any other configuration we so FreeBSD supports and uh, easier configuration, um, a, not so easy to configure on FreeBSD. If you have a, such a uh, configuration scenario, uh, other than these four, the please. Uh, 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 please let me know or share your experience. Or uh, you try to configure the uh, these four, uh, one of the, these four, and uh, it as you have uh, experience and not uh, not experienced about uh, uh, something you did not work, you did not make it work. So uh, that is uh, important information that please share the experience. And uh, another configuration uh, we have to uh, consider recently is uh, IPv6 router uh, configuration, but uh, which have to support the Slack at the same time. Current FreeBSD implementation does not support the receiving array. I mean that I mean that the Slack supporting support uh, Slack, and uh, uh, I explained it requires the accept or the add of a flag on the interface. But uh, if the uh, FreeBSD machine uh, enables the packet forwarding, the receiving array will be uh, disabled automatically. Uh, this is uh, a limitation of the, uh, the RFC says the router nodes should not, uh, must not, I think, uh, receive the uh, route advertisement. So implementation is uh, uh, implementation is along with the uh, description of the RFC. But uh, this limitation uh, causes the uh, uh, this implementation makes it 
impossible to realize the uh, slack and the uh, uh, routing capability. And the, this combination is uh, commonly used for uh, uh, routers used as a boundary uh, between the uh, ISP and the, your local area network. So uh, one facing interface will be configured by router management and the uh, local area network facing interface will be DCP V6PD. In this case, uh, you need uh, both uh, mechanisms. And to support this, um, Cisco will it was implemented, but uh, it is uh, a kind of a hack. So I I want to know how much uh, this knob is actually used. And the DCP is client base. I think uh, this will be the long discussion if we uh, kick off the dis this discussion. But the I personally want uh, this VBC client and base and uh, it should be a very small one because the, I explained in the earlier slide that the ECB V6 is not independent from the uh, uh, other configuration and other user line utilities which uses RA message. Currently, FreeBSD has RT SOD as a user line daemon uh, which uses RA, but uh, if the DHCP client will be imported. The DHCP client sh uh, should uh, read the uh, router advertiser message on the interface. So if uh, two daemons will not uh, communicate with each other, um, it is difficult to configure. So um, I think it, it is a one way to import the uh, DHCP. DCP basic client yes to import a very small basic uh, implementation in the base and we maintain it directly and if uh, for power users and the other experienced system administrators who want to install the uh, more feature rich implementation um, people can install the, it from the points collection without interference with the uh, stock version of the small like DHCP based client. This is not a decision. Uh, uh, I want to discuss this, but uh, this is uh, my personal um, opinion. And uh, this is the last uh, slide uh, about uh, explaining uh, issues and missing a feature. Um, this is a random list uh, which I uh, wrote, but uh, uh, IPv6 works in most cases, but uh, there are a lot of glitches and uh, uh, missing features. and uh, uh, this is um I am um, I fix I have a uh, uh, implementation to fix them or I am still wondering how to solve uh, these problems. So first one the link local address and uh, first as uh, command line is uh, not uh, strictly related to the um uh, co um problem. So this is not problem. This works fine, but. Uh, uh, for example, the FF02 uh, colon colon one is uh, a very popular address, uh, which uh, the every system administrator uh, is, must know, and uh, very useful. But uh, these addresses are not so well documented. And the second one, and the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one, the screen is uh, an example of the, of the configuration by using a link local address. If you have a server on the same link, you can configure the um, uh, server address by using a link local address. So for resolve.com, for NTP server, for um, default router, or syslogd, or exports. And the configuration is slightly different syntax, and it is very confusing, but uh, some of them doesn't work. Because of the uh, bag, in the program or the because of the um, um, yeah, structure or structural problem of the uh, utility or daemon. Some of them are fixed, but uh, some of them are uh, still, uh, uh, still, still do not work. 
And the second one is AnyCast address. AnyCast address is the hidden feature of the IPv6 and not widely used, but the, it is a very uh, useful way to uh, provide the uh, redundant uh, route of the uh, IPv6 router. So uh, I usually put the FE80 and the, uh, the remaining bit is zero. Uh, the this address as uh, any cast address on the every uh, interface to use the um, a useful uh, way to provide the uh, various kind of uh, service or so routing a port to provide the redundancy. But the recent RFC uh, revised RFC. Uh, change the semantics of the any cast. So L3 communication is now allowed, but the FreeBSD does not allow the L3 communication. So we may change the, our implementation or not. Uh, we have to consider. And the privacy extensions, the every automatic configuration configured address has the a part of the uh, MAC address. So this is this causes the privacy uh, problem because uh, this address is a link local, but uh, this address will be used as uh, also as a global unicast address. So your address will be disclosed just uh, uh, establish a TCP connection. So a recent RFCs um, suggest to implement a stable address. It is randomized, but you can use the same address uh, over the multiple uh, reboot. So I have a uh, uh, implementation, and uh, I am going to uh, commit the support of the stable address and the kernel. And the multi cast DNS is uh, in the base system is another discussion because the uh, link local address cannot be registered, cannot be put into the DNS. So you have to use the address itself. But the multi cast DNS is um, a way to solve that. But we do not have the implementation on in the base system. This is the one of the um, uh, point we can improve. OK, so that's all uh, what I have. And uh, I want to discuss, and I want your bad experience especially. That's all. Thanks. So there are a couple of questions um, asking um, asking about the differences between IPv4 and IPv6. I don't know if you want to if you wanted to talk about that now. Um, oh, it, it's a big, big. That's question. a very big question, so, unfortunately. Yeah. Main difference, the yeah. So of course, the address, uh, um, the address is uh, different from the 32-bit to 128-bit. It is a main difference, I think. And the, another question is okay. This Q and A has the same question. So Constantine has a question. He says, can we have something pre-canned to ease or make configuration over tunnels easier? For instance, a lot of people get IPv6 over Hurricane Electric or some similar broker. Uh, yes, I think it is a good idea. Uh, but uh, probably providing the configuration file set by using the ports collection might be the best way to provide this kind of configuration. I think the uh, DCPv6 example is uh, available as a, a, a package uh, under the net, I think, to provide the example of the configuration. Yes, I, I think it is a good idea to provide the configuration example for the tunnels. 
Okay, I know for Hurricane Electric, when I used the tunnel there, um, they were actually pretty good that they had FreeBSD specific instructions. You could pretty much copy and paste into either yeah. RCA conf or to run, but I don't know that all tunnel brokers provide that same kind of type of thing. So maybe a, a good example. Um, if, for example, I don't know if we've documented that in the handbook. That might be something we that we should add. Yeah, and uh, we we definitely need uh, more documentation about the BB6. So I will put the information on my slides and the other materials into the documentation. Uh, I think it's separate from the handbook, uh, the FreeBSD on uh, IPv6 on FreeBSD or something into the official uh, documentation set. Okay, I think that covers one of our other questions, which is, is there some documentation on using DHCP v6 with PD on FreeBSD? So it sounds uh, like- Documentation. I think uh, server side is not specific to FreeBSD. It's just uh, providing the address information over the uh, DHCP protocol. So I think the documentation is just uh, for the DHCP implementation itself. And uh, it uh, dependency of the operating system is quite small, I think. Okay, um, I think schedule wise, we're actually due for a break. Um, so I think we might go ahead and do that, but I, there is some activity on, um, folks have been typing stuff into the, the HackMD. So I would encourage folks to continue adding notes to the HackMD. Somebody had a question that renaming of an if name doesn't work correctly and, and someone has said, what doesn't work? So that one might need some more detail, but I would encourage folks to continue typing stuff into the HackMD. Um, and if you want to talk about it more, maybe grab a breakout room over in the hallway track and we can continue discussing this in the hallway track. Um, but for now, why don't we go ahead and take a five minute break before our next session. And thank you very much, Hiroki. Okay, thank you everyone.